So we have an issue with this vehicle. This vehicle runs rough. Uh, we want to find out what is the problem. So one of the tests you want to find out or you want to use is doing a vacuum test. A vacuum test will tell you if your engine is mechanically sound, if you can't, if you have any kind of air-free mixture issues or mechanical problems within the engine, it will reflect on vacuum. What you want to see on vacuum, you want to see approximately 17 to 21 inches of vacuum steady needle at idle here at sea level because when the pressure changes, the vacuum will also change. So if we go over the mountains, you will have a different vacuum up in the mountains. So at sea level, you want a 21 inches of vacuum steady. And there's a vacuum hose here that we're gonna attach these to adapters. So where do you hook up a vacuum hose or a vacuum gauge? In this case, it's a vacuum pump and a gauge as well. So where do we hook it up? Something that you need to kind of always remember is that here we have the throttle. The throttle body itself gets bolted to the intake manifold. So there's the throttle plate here. You want to hook up your vacuum gauge anywhere after the throttle plate because any, anything before is just atmospheric pressure. So the throttle is the one that actually creates that restriction and the pressure drop. So anywhere after the throttle, which will be the throttle body, I could hook it up to this gate, this hose, this hose that goes to other components. So if this hose goes to a fuel pressure regulator, so if I interrupt that, I'm gonna change the air-free mixture, so I don't wanna do that. I'm just gonna move this hose here in the top that goes into a vacuum uh, container that is used for cruise control in this vehicle. So I'm gonna unplug this, I'm gonna unplug it, and I'm gonna bring it over here. And I'm going to connect my vacuum gauge with my adapter here. Nice and seal. So now, with this vacuum hose connected to the gauge, now we can start a car and measure the vacuum. We're gonna do the vacuum test at idle, and we're gonna do a vacuum test at 2500 RPMs. So now, I'm gonna take advantage right now that the engine is off, and I have a power probe here connected to the gauge, uh, to the starter motor, I'm sorry. And we're gonna crank our engine and look at cranking vacuum. Let's see how much vacuum we get from this engine as we crank uh, the engine. So if we look at the gauge, and let me crank the engine by pressing the power button. Notice that the needle fluctuates. It should fluctuate at least two inches, two and a half inches and above. So this one, it starts at zero, but my actual needle or the setup on my gauge from the zero goes up to five psi so we kind of looked at the five psi and after the, the each line is very close to each other so we could get an idea of how many inches of vacuum we fluctuate so let's do it one more time that's an indication that you have good compression if the gauge remains at zero when I crank the engine, that's an indication that there's no compression on this engine and that's why the engine will not start. So now I'm gonna start a vehicle and we're gonna actually see what type of vacuum reading we're getting on this engine. So I'm gonna set up the gauge here at this moment and I'm gonna go and crank my engine and look at vacuum as I start the engine. Look at this gauge. This gauge is around 14, 30 to 14 inches of vacuum. <clears throat> but also notice a couple of things. Notice how the engine is running. And I'm going to raise the RPMs. So approximately 2500 RPMs. 
I let it idle. Notice how high the vacuum went when I let it idle. Now also note something else. I'm going to snap the throttle and look at vacuum. Now the vacuum is so low because we have an engine that is not running that great. The engine is warming up so your vacuum is also increasing as well because it's running a little bit better as the engine is warming up. So we're trying to figure out why is this engine running rough. All right, so that's one of the first sets you want to start. At idle, now I'm measuring 16 inches of vacuum. I'm going to raise the RPMs to 2500. The vacuum gets slightly better, but it's still not enough. I'm going to snap my throttle. The vacuum should go to zero when I snap the throttle. And your vacuum should get a little higher than idle vacuum, which is normal. Now, as I have these vacuum gates connected, let's run a power balance test because this engine is not running that great. I could feel that it's vibrating a lot. That is an indication of one thing that's not working properly. So we're going to do a power balance test. I'm going to disconnect one spark plug wire at a time. And we're going to look at RPM drop from the engine. So I'm going to pull one of the wires. So that's removing spark out of the wire. And also, no, whenever you remove spark plug wires, use a one hand rule. So that means do not put your hand on the chassis because you could ground yourself and spark could go across your body. So always use a one hand rule. So put one hand behind your back so you won't ground yourself. And then you're going to pull a wire one at a time and look at RPM drops. Notice how the engine vibrates more. So I'm going to go to the next cylinder. There's a vibration there, so I'm going to lift it up one more time. See how it vibrates? Pull it back. Now also, here's something I want you to note. As I remove each one of them, watch the vacuum. Watch how your vacuum fluctuates. Notice how one cylinder has a huge effect on your vacuum. So now let me go to the next cylinder. And let's check for RPM drop. There's a vibration and look at your vacuum. Vacuum drops. Now I'm measuring 19 inches of vacuum as the engine is warming up. But when I remove a cylinder, RPMs drop because that cylinder is working. So now let's go to number one cylinder and see how that cylinder responds. Did you notice there's absolutely no change? Now, if we go to the other cylinders, look, look at the difference. See how the engine vibrates more. That's an indication the cylinder works. This cylinder is working because the RPMs drop when I disable it. And I go to the number four cylinder. All right. So now let's go to this number one cylinder one more time and see what's going on. There's absolutely no change. Not on vacuum, not even on the RPMs. So what that means, what that means is that number one cylinder is not working on this engine for some reason. Now we need to continue our test and find out if the problem is compression or is the problem uh, spark or air fuel mixtures. It's got to be one of those three things because that's what the three things that the cylinder or engine requires in order to operate properly. So now we're going to continue with the compression test and find out if we have a mechanically sound engine on that cylinder or not. If not, then we'll move on into spark or fuel.
every time you do a tune-up, every time you remove spark plugs, don't just remove the spark plugs and put them to the side. Always keep them in order because the spark plugs will tell you a lot of, about how the engine is running. Now, for example here, I removed these four spark plugs. And if we look closely to the spark plugs, the spark plugs will give you the actual misfire that is, uh, if it's a misfire going on or if it's running rich or lean, the color that you want to see on spark plugs is a brownish coconut color on the ceramic part. That's what you want to see. If this part is too white, that means it's too clean, it's running too lean, not enough fuel. If it gets too dark, it means that it's running rich. Now, also something else I, no I noted, now if you notice here, this spark plug, this spark plug has oil and the other spark plugs are dry. So that it's an indication that not only that this vehicle has an issue, uh, but also the, the valve cover gasket, it has seals. So there's a seal underneath here between the valve cover and the cylinder head. But each one of the spark plug holes, there's a tube, there's a seal around that tube. What is happening on this engine, that number one cylinder, it's that tube, that seal, is causing oil to go inside and it's creating a slight puddle. So that at times can give you a misfire, but we need to find out if that is the actual case. But, but if you were only doing it just to service a regular maintenance on a car and you remove the spark plus and you notice this, that's it is an opportunity to tell the customer or the service advisor, say, hey, you know, I just I'm doing a tune up on this car, but I just noticed that there's oil on this spark plug and the reason for that is because there's a seal on the valve cover gasket that is leaking. So if you document that on your repair order, you should be all right. And if you take pictures, get some evidence to show that to the customer, it's even better. Okay. We're gonna run a compression test. There are a couple of things to keep in mind when you do compression tests. One of them is that you have to keep uh, the same cranking speed throughout the whole test to so make sure the battery is fully charged. And two, uh, we're also gonna have, we're gonna use a compression gauge. I'm gonna put this adapter onto each one of the spark plug holes and we're gonna crank our engine for around four to five seconds. And we're gonna look very close to the first puff, which is very important. We're gonna look at the first puff, should be at least 70% of your final result, indicating you have a good sealing cylinder. I have the spark plugs removed already. Whenever you do the test, make sure you, all the spark plugs are removed so you can maintain the same cranking speed throughout each one of the cylinders so we're going to start with cylinder number one i'm going to thread in this adapter make sure it's nice and tight just snug don't put it too tight i'm going to put our adapter and we're going to crank our engine also, uh, since I'm going to be working by myself, uh, there are times where you're going to have to find a way to crank the engine when you're working by yourself and looking at the gauge at the same time. What I have uh, set up here, I have this yellow wire that is connected to the starter motor uh, S terminal, which is the uh, terminal that you get battery voltage from the starter motor. So I'm going to use a power probe when I can actually apply power directly bypassing the ignition switch and this will crank my engine. So what we're going to do, we're going to look at this gauge as I crank the engine and make sure that you look directly at the first puff. So I'm gonna crank the engine right now for around four seconds. Notice the pressure, it's 170 psi each line represents 10 pounds of pressure so it's on the second line after the 150 so that seems like it's a good cylinder release the pressure and do the test one more time so i'm going to crank the engine one more time and here it goes and the pressure it's around 175 or so so do it at least twice per cylinder, release the pressure, and then go to the next cylinder. I'm gonna go directly to cylinder number two, and we're gonna see how much pressure we have. Let me make sure it's 
nice and snug. Gonna crank our engine one more time. We're gonna look at the gauge. And here we go. And gave us around 162 psi. Gonna release the pressure. Gonna crank one more time to get a second reading. You notice that I'm losing the pressure right now. It's not supposed to do that. So that's an indication that there's something going on with my equipment. What usually goes bad, it's, there is a straighter valve that could be causing the issue. The common problem that happens with this tool is that the shredder valve gets damaged. So let's replace the shredder valve and continue our test. This is giving us 168 psi, 168, 69, very close. Now reset it and run the test one more time. Here's giving me 168 psi. So that's a good compression. Pay very close attention to the first puff. I'm getting approximately 90 pounds of pressure on the first puff on this cylinder. So now we're gonna go to the next cylinder. Here we look at our gauge one more time. Gonna crank the engine over. I'm getting 165 psi. Reset it, do it again, pay close attention to the first puff and your final result. It's giving me 170 psi. Now notice that the first puff was kind of low, so let's do it one more time. This was 90 psi. Final result 167, 68 psi. Fairly, it's very close to the other cylinder. So now let's go to cylinder number three. Check our gauge, crank our engine, and look at the first puff and find the result. It's giving me 160 psi. Reset it, run the test one more time. One hundred and sixty psi. Let's go and check our final cylinder, cylinder number one. And this is the one cylinder that show no operation doing that power balance test because the RPMs did not drop. So let's find out if the problem is mechanical. So you always want to compare a bad cylinder with a good working cylinder. I'm gonna crank our engine one more time. Give me 160, 50, 179 psi. I'm sorry. One more time. One hundred and eighty psi. One more time. There it is. One hundred and seventy-eight psi. I just noticed that I was reading uh, all the previous ones wrong because every line is it's 10 psi so that 150 plus two lines that is 150 60 170 and it's right in the middle so it's 175 so roughly all of them were measuring at around 175 179 psi
So what does that indicate? If we look at the final result, you don't want all the cylinders to be no more than 20 PSI difference from each other. The highest was around 180 PSI. The lowest was around 172 PSI. So you're looking at around 8 PSI difference. So that's way less than the 20 PSI uh, different uh, 20 psi 20 percent difference from the highest to the lowest so compression wise this engine is even so that means you have a good uh, sound engine mechanically so the problem is not mechanical that misfire it's due to something else so whenever you perform this power balance test that prove that that number one cylinder is not working it could only be three things that could be affecting that one cylinder it could be compression air fuel mixture and spark at the right time and the right strength okay so after running a couple of tests we find out that this engine it's mechanically sound it has good compression and we went and checked spark and we had an issue with the spark plug wire so we we put a good uh, known working wire so we could get some proof and you could see how that's going to reflect on your vacuum gauge so now look at the vacuum gauge right now and you're going to see that I'm gonna start the vehicle, engine is off, so we have zero inches of vacuum. I'm gonna start the car and let's notice our vacuum. Now if you notice, that needle is around 20 inches of vacuum, and that vacuum is steady. If you look at this gauge, steady vacuum, uh, it's fluctuating a little bit, it's fluctuating to the 21, but it's it's steady. Now if you look at it here, there it is, 20 inches of vacuum. Needles by very little, but it's fairly steady. Now I'm going to raise the RPMs, do the same test at 2500 RPMs. So I'm going to raise the RPMs by opening the throttle by hand and look at the gauge. that needle to be steady or increase a little bit higher than idle vacuum you don't want to see that vacuum drop now if I let off the throttle the vacuum will increase slightly and then come back to normal idle now if I snap the throttle it's gonna go to zero and then it's gonna increase to a little bit higher than idle vacuum then stabilize Okay. So that is one of the things you want to check with vacuum. Vacuum tells you a lot about how the engine is running. With a vacuum test, you could find out if you have a mechanical problem or something else that it could potentially be causing the cylinder not to work properly. It does get reflected on vacuum. Now there are some vehicles that are computer controlled. This is a fuel injected vehicle. Some computers will adjust very, very well that sometimes it will hide problems on your vacuum. But in this case, we were able to get a very good reading with a fault and with a working engine out. So now we can use this test to find out, practice this test to see if you have an issue with an engine, how well it's running. Now, if we perform this power balance test one more time, how the engine is properly running, the number one cylinder was the one that was not working. So if I do a power balance test on this one cylinder, look at our PM drop. Go to the next one. Both number one and number two fairly drop around the same RPMs. So that's for, that's running a couple of tests to find out how the engine is running. Start with a vacuum test. That will give you an indication what type of fault you have. If you have a no start condition, do a cranking vacuum test. It should give you at least two and a half inches or higher. If the engine runs but it misfires. Do a power balance test to identify non-working cylinders. After you find out the cylinder is not working, do a compression test. If the compressor fails, if it fails the test, then we need to do a cylinder leak down test to find out why we lost the compressor. 
but in this case the compression showed okay so the problem was not compression it had to be spark or fuel and our test in this case showed that we had a bad spark plug wire and we put a good working spark plug wire and to prove that is now the engine is running mechanic is running okay